Hi everybody. Today we're going to do a painting of a landscape. This is what we're going to copy from a reference. I say reference and not copy from because we're not making a copy. We're making a version of this landscape. And as if you did the flower last time, the other painting we did together, nobody's is going to look like the person's next to them and it's not going to look like this one. And the one I do today isn't going to look like the one I did when I was um, working on this one. So here's what we have. We have a sky and always in nature. You can check this out when you go outside. The darkest part of the sky is always at the top. And the lower part of the sky, where you're looking through a greater length of atmosphere, the sky will be lighter. Then we have mountains or hills in the background far away. The far away mountains are always going to be going to be lighter than those close up. And then we have a row of trees. Again, these are far away. They're not very distinct. And of course, they're small because they're far away. Then we have this grassy part here. And the grass also, to make the painting interesting and to reflect nature, we're going to have some sunny parts. The sunniest part is right here in the uh, the distance and then it's getting still sunny but less sunny as you come forward and then we have a row of trees here which is creating shade we have a shadowy part in front of those trees and a somewhat shadowy part in front of that in the foreground our very last step of the painting is going to be these flowers so we can maybe imagine this is the Texas Hill Country and we have maybe blue bonnets and Indian paintbrush in the foreground. But we'll leave that to your own imagination. Now the colors we're going to be using, we're going to be using white, titanium white, acrylic paint, and then three primary colors. Cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson for our red, yellow, and blue. And we can technically make all sorts of colors by mixing those, these three. And that's what we're gonna do in the painting. We're gonna be working only with three colors, but we can have a lot of variations, and we will. We'll have variations of blue, variations of purple, and a lot of shades of green to make it really interesting. So we'll get out the paint first. We're going to get, first, we're going to start with some white and some blue. And we're going to start with what's farthest away, which is the sky. So some blue paint. Yeah, I'll get a good amount of blue because we're going to use a lot of blue. Now for the sky, obviously this is very dark. We're not going to use it full strength. We're going to make two shades of blue, a very pale one for the lower part of the sky and then a darker one for up above. So we're going to make, we're going to just take a small amount of blue and mix it into white. And just mix them together. And maybe a little darker than that for the darkest part of our sky. Just mixing it around until there's no um, precise color that we're aiming for. It's just a medium blue. And then wipe off our palette night, take some more white paint, and take some of our blue we just made, mix it into that white, and we get our 
pale blue for the lower part of the sky. I'll just mix this together again. And when you're working, it doesn't matter if the paint is thoroughly mixed. It's not like you're painting the walls of a room or something. You will, in nature, have variations. The sky isn't, as you, you know, the sky is never a completely solid color. Neither is grass a solid green. There are all sorts of shades and variations. Now, if we take our, start about halfway up the canvas, and if you want to, actually it's a good idea, take your brush on its side. You're gonna be using a flat brush, and start with the largest one, hold it sideways, and make a line across the bottom a little more than halfway up the canvas. And then paint with your light blue. Do, this, do the line with the light blue. Paint with the light blue, so smooth it out. Get some more. Smooth it out. And the sky's gonna be lighter and lighter as we go up. So, Taking the darker blue up to the top, paint the other, paint the top part with the darker blue. And here's the cool thing. Blend them together. They're gonna meet in the middle, but you're not gonna have a sharp transition. You're gonna have a gradual transition. So just mess up that separation line. Yeah, I got, I got a little, more, little too much light blue on the corner, so I'm gonna just mix a little white into it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, there's our sky for now. And now for our mountains. For our mountains, we're gonna take our faraway mountains, these right here. Take a little light blue and some red. And red and blue mixed together make purple. So we're gonna make a pale bluish purple. So we just want a tiny bit to start with of the red, not much at all. Mix it in to the light blue. And that's too pink. So I'm gonna take some more blue and mix it in. What we want is a grayish purple and that is okay, could be okay, but I'm gonna use a little bit more blue. And again, none of these colors are precise. And you can stop there. Yeah, maybe I'll stop there. Could go further, but no need. And just wash your brush a little bit. Doesn't have to be washed thoroughly. And at the separation, just above the separation of the blue sky you just did, take the side of your brush, take the edge of your brush again, and go across and make kind of a wavy line. Now looking at, um, now just not, not too regular with the up and down curves, but just, some bumps that are hills in the far distance and they're not going to be very distinct. Looking at that I want that a little more blue so I'll put a little more blue in mixing in a little my medium blue this time and make some up and down strokes. Just go over that line you just made do some up and down strokes And this is gonna be our far away row or group of hills. And 
And I kind of like those, those blue streaks. If you can see them, those blue streaks in there, I'm going to kind of, no, yeah, not that much. I'm going to try to put some blue streaks, blue areas in here where it's shadier maybe. And, um, oh, another thing which I should have uh, mentioned, but it's not too important in this side. It's not as important in a small painting like we're doing, this 8 by 10 canvas, but we're going to have the, sunny, the sunlight more like coming from the right hand side. So this left part, the left side of these hills is going to be shadier than the right side because the sun's hitting the left side more directly. And we want a little, we want to make that a little more irregular. So I'm just making some little sticking up parts as we go along as the, there's overlapping hills. They're not all at the same distance away. Some are behind others. So there's that. And now we want some darker mountains in, the, in front of those. Closer to us is going to make them darker. So to make them darker, we're going to put in more blue. And do another row of the same thing. Take the brush on, this, on the edge, the narrow edge. Go in front of these. Now don't make it parallel to the first row. Spread them out, make them different and make them different from each other and don't follow the line of the background hills. Just do some of this and make these closer hills. Now nothing has to be very regular, but it, the more um, random it is, the better it is. Also, to, when you get a line like that at the, at the tops of these hills, kind of smooth that down. You will have some darker and lighter parts. In other words, some sunny and shadier parts, but you won't have a real distinct edge to these hills because they're far away. And things that are in the far distance are never going to look real distinct in order to be realistic. We want them to be kind of big and fuzzy because there's a lot of distance. We're not really in sharp focus when we're looking that far away. And if this goes up above the, the Row, if this goes up above the row behind, no problem. That's all good. It can be like that. They can be taller. Okay, that's that part of the painting. Now, to go on making the composition, the next thing we're going to be getting into is our shades of green for our trees and our field. And for that, we're going to use, to make green, of course, we're going to use yellow and blue. So we'll take, gonna, we'll take some yellow. And it helps to always start with the lighter color and put the darker one into it. When we did the blue, we started, when we made the light blue and the medium blue, we started with the white and mixed blue into that into it because the white is the lighter and it's easier to start with the lighter and mix the darker one into it. So this time we're going to start with some yellow and we're going to make a pretty good amount of this green. We're going to start with yellow, mix a smaller amount, maybe half as much blue into it to start out with. We're going to play around with this until we get... Actually, this is coming out pretty well. This is about half yellow, or I would say three-quarters yellow, and 
one quarter blue. And that's our light yellow, our light yellow green. And then we want to make a light, a medium, and a dark. So to do that, we take about half of that yellow green, take a little bit more blue, Uh, more than that, we can, it's always easier to make it darker than to make it lighter, but you can go either way. I added more blue. If it was too yellow, you could add more, or if it was, if you needed more yellow, you could add more yellow. And I want my, I want more difference between my medium and my light green. So that's a nice, that's pretty good for medium green. And now for the really dark areas, we're gonna make a super dark blue-green for the shadowy parts. So again, take a little more blue, mix it in, a little more than that. Can always go back and forth with the blue and yellow too if you want. Now this, we can make this very, very dark. Yeah, this is getting, this is better. Okay, so that's the idea. We have light yellow green, medium green, and dark blue green. All right, we're ready. Okay, so we'll take a, to maybe the smaller of your two brushes, if you're using the bigger one, and take some of the dark green that we just made. And we're gonna make our first row of trees at the bottom of these hills and overlapping a little bit. And these trees, well, you wanna make vertical strokes because you want the up and down feeling of the trees. If you make a cross stroke, you don't get the idea of trees, you just get the idea of a green line. And it's gonna look more like the grassy area when we do that. Now you want also to have some tree, tree tops sticking up. So don't make it, just make a bunch of green lines next to, next to each other. And that's gonna look like some trees in the distance, believe it or not. You can convince yourself these are trees. When you see trees in the distance, you don't see trees, you just see a bunch of green. You don't pick out, oh, I, that's an oak tree, I can tell by the leaves. You don't see things distinctly in the distance. And so being painting trees in the distance, we don't have to do a lot of fussing around to make them look like realistic trees. If they are vertical and they are various shades of green, and they're gonna have various shades of green, but they're gonna look like trees, believe it or not. It's all gonna work. So we're gonna go about across the canvas doing this with our dark green. About two thirds of the way, I'm saying, yeah. And they're gonna get a little smaller, because again, this is farther away. We're kind of standing down here looking out. And so these, are, these trees here are a little farther away. They're gonna be a little smaller. I don't have to be real concerned about it yet because we haven't done the grass. The grass is gonna overlap the trees, of course. And then we're gonna make a little shadowy part of the grass here, just at the base of the mountains. That's also dark green. And it doesn't have to be straight, because who says in nature this is a straight line? These mountains are coming down. You see another piece of land sticking up in front of them. Who says it's straight? It could be contoured any way at all. So having done that, we're ready for our light grassy part. That's gonna go, now the grass 
is going to have is going to be made with horizontal strokes and there's a lot of it and you notice this is getting just with what I picked up on my brush notice the different shades of green that's not bad that's good because the grass isn't uniform some parts are sunnier some parts are weedier the composition of the grass is different the way the sun hits it is different maybe the height of the grass is different so that's going to make the grass look like it contains a lot of different colors i'm going to take this right up to overlap the trees covering we're going to make shadows at the bottom of the trees where it's where the trees are casting shadows because the sun is coming from behind the mountains or hills or mountains or whatever you're going to call them and we're going to have a lot of this yellow green grass going into the distance here and you don't have to be very precise about it because you're going to put things on top of things and you're going to have a whole lot of layers of one thing on top of another. And right now, well, we'll do a little, bring this up to the foreground here. Maybe in the foreground have medium green. And just like we did with the sky, we're going to bring the medium green into the light green and blur them together. And as I keep saying, it doesn't have to be uniform. Just make it happen. Just do it. I'm going to pick this up a little bit from the, I'm just going to pick this up from the easel a tiny bit so I can hit that lower edge. Long, smooth strokes. If you have any little marks which I'll try to show you if I these marks where your brush stops you can see a little like lighter or darker spot like see that little light spot where I picked up my brush if you get irregularities like that just smooth them out so that's not the kind of randomness we really want now for this bunch of trees over here, I've left a space. Didn't have to, could have gone over it with the yellow green, but as it happened, I left a space. I'm gonna make these closer trees now. And we're gonna do those the same way. They're bigger, of course, because they're closer to us. And they're gonna have a little more detail, but not a lot more detail. This is an impressionist, more impressionist style of painting. It's just not supposed to do what a photograph does. It's not supposed to be an exact representation of this place. It's supposed to just give you the feeling and an idea of what is pretty about this landscape. So that's the start of our closer trees. And then we're going to make some very dark green by taking some blue and mixing our dark green with this blue and it makes a super, super dark green. And we're going to make these shadows in front of the trees. So let's do that. Horizontal strokes again, just like we did the grass, because it is the grass, it's just the grass with shadows on it. Horizontal strokes back and forth, nice and smooth and even. kind of trailing off the shadow, kind of trailing off unevenly into the grass. And do the same thing here, but narrow, a narrow strip of shadows. Yeah, that's not dark enough, so I picked up some light green on my brush, so I'm just gonna give my brush a wipe, go back to my very dark blue-green, and just little strokes this time along the base of those trees, those distant trees. 
and you can go with a stroke, but maybe for these, not so much a long stroke, just a little dab here and there. And make an irregular edge because the shadow is going to have an irregular contour to it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of disappear into this shadowy place. These trees are going to fade away. Okay, now we want a little more definition in our trees. So I'm going to wash off my brush and go to some pure yellow, mix that with my light green. So it's a, it's a yellow green and not really a yellow. And to make these look like realistic trees, we're going to make some areas here where the sun is hitting that are brighter. Now I'm working along the top of the trees because the sun is more going to be more um, pronounced. The sunlight is going to hit the top of the trees more strongly than the base. But I'm going along making little dots of yellow green, mm, sort of less. Now here, that's a little strong, so I'm just going to blur those out. I'm just going to paint it into the, the green that's already there. And maybe even put a little bit more medium green on top of it. Don't want that quite so more. Don't want that quite so light. I just mixed a little more medium green in there and a little more dark green, the dark green that we started with on these, not the super dark shadowy green, but the dark green we started with, move that, put that a little more in, and kind of random strokes. And um, hopefully this is going to fill out the shapes of the trees and make them look still vertical, but like they have a little more width aspect to them. So just go across like that. Don't like that bright yellow there. And now I'm going to make these foreground trees darker again with the dark, not the super blue green, or well, I'm going to go over it with the first color that I use, the dark green, and then put in dots dot in some little bits of medium green. And notice there's not a little, there's not a lot of order to this because this is a group of trees that are overlapping one another. And as before, we want some light areas near the top of the trees. So we'll go back to our light color. And notice we've used our light green and our medium green and our dark green in these trees. So just like in nature, you're going to dif see different shades depending on how the leaves are catching the light. But we're not making realistic trees. We're not making little individual leaves or even showing any tree trunks because we're not seeing detail. We're still far enough away. We're not seeing detail in these trees. And that's getting to look a little better, but I'm going to use some dark green here on the base of the tree. The base of the tree is less bright and more shaded than, of course, the top of the trees. And also, I want to have more sun hitting this edge, the trees on this 
edge. Yeah, and some little spots in between here. And you just fool around with this and stand back, push, yeah, and push yourself back to look at it, if you even, or lean back in your chair to look at it and see that it looks right to you. Now, obviously, you want to smooth out this. And I want to make this shadow a little more pronounced over here. Nice blue green for the shadow. Okay, and take a look, stop and take a look, lean back. And that should look like a fairly convincing group of trees. You don't see a lot of distant, a lot of distinct areas, but you can pick out there's a tree, there's a tree, and there's a row of trees behind the one. Uh, there are trees piled up in front of one another. That's the idea we're going for. And now we're ready. We're not going to do our flowers till the very end, but we are going to make the background for the flowers very dark. So go back with the dark green. And darken up this foreground grass. This foreground grass we're going to get the idea that this foreground grass is tall grass. We're still using horizontal strokes here, but we're making a shadowy part. Because the flowers, the flower area is going to, the base of the flowers is going to be in shadow. So, we have that foreground part, sunnier and very sunny in the background. Now we're going to refine it and make the sunny part, we're going to make the sunny part in the background very sunny and maybe a little bit of extra sunny part here and here, just various places where the sun is intense. And we said we're going to imagine that the sun's coming from this part of the sky on the right. So let's take, oh, just take a brush that's been washed off. Washed off pretty well. Okay, we're going to take a little white and mix it into our light yellow green, about maybe half and half. And we're going to make a real light section here in the distance. This is our sunny part. Sun's coming through these, through in front of these trees. Not, of course, the shadow of the trees, but in front of the shadow of the trees, not in front of the trees themselves. But we're going to have little areas of bright sun, or big areas actually, of bright sun coming through. Onto the grass here. And now here I just took some yellow and mixed into the yellow green. If the yellow green is mixed with yellow, it's somewhat sunny. If it's mixed with white, it's very sunny. And we want all of those shades and gradations of color in there. So we do that. And we don't try to make a real smooth area of any one shade. They all blend together. The sun hits the grass, but 
the grass still contains a lot of different shades of green as you look across it. And maybe we want a little bit in front of these trees, maybe we want a little bit brighter than it is. So we'll just add a little brightness there. And coming right down to as far as, it, nah, again, no precision, just have the sunny areas and the shady areas fading into one another. And having done that, let's go back to the sky. The sky and the land have to correspond. So we want the sunnier part of the sky here on the left we said. So what I did is I took some white, mixed it with my mostly white, a little bit of my pale blue, my lightest blue. I'm going to make this side of the sky brighter. Going right down to our, the edge of our mountains. And don't worry about keeping a separation because, as we said, the things in the distance are going to be less distinct. The edge of the mountain is not going to show up as a sharp edge when it's this far away. And we're going to sort of streak that across, go back to our light blue. I just want this part of the sky to be, this side of the sky to be somewhat darker. So we'll put that, the dark blue back in there. And I'm getting, uh, if you look carefully, I don't know how much it shows, but I'm getting some marks where I pick up my brush as I go across. So I'm smoothing those out. Because one thing, one area where you don't want sharp transitions is in the sky itself. The sky itself is always very, very smooth in appearance. Even if there are clouds, the clouds don't have sharp edges. They just trail off very gradually. Now, going back to my dark blue, you can go back and forth here. The upper part of the sky being bluer, so we, now we have a blue, we have a bright part of our sky and a darker part of our sky. But what I'm not liking is this transition here. I want to make that more gradual. So, to wet my brush a little with water and blend them together. Just put a little water on the brush so it's just barely damp. It's not wet, it's just barely damp and go over the transition areas. The water will kind of blend the paint colors together. And just spool around with that, go back and forth across the sky. Could have a little more dark color here. And then the other thing I'm seeing on mine, you may or may not have this problem, but on mine, the mountains here have a little bit of the white canvas showing. So I'm just going to get a little more of the purplish color, bluish purplish, and just kind of go over that, cover up any areas that you need to make thicker, fade out any of the edges that are too distinct. Just paint over them until they look 
the way you feel is right, because you're the one making the decisions. If it looks right to you, then it's the right, it's the right way. Everybody sees a little differently. What, the way I choose to make things look is not gonna necessarily hit everybody the right way. There's no wrong way. Well, there is a wrong way if you're trying to precisely copy nature. And we are doing impressionist style, so we're not totally rigidly comp copying nature, but we don't want to deviate too much. I'm smoothing out the sky where I had a little bit more of an abrupt transition than I wanted. Okay, and now, um, oh, what I'm gonna have you do right now is stop and do the edges of your canvas. Now, normally I do paint the edges because if you look at, if you look at the way the edge is, it's all irregular. And if you're gonna hang it on the wall without a frame, you wouldn't want that rough, sloppy edge showing. So just take your brush at this point, hold it by one edge, probably the top edge like I am, and paint over the whole edge. So therefore, if the bottom of the canvas shows, it'll look neat. It won't look sloppy the way it would if you're, if you just left it the way the paint happened to fall across the corner of the stretched canvas. So I'm going to go, no, we don't have to really follow the pattern of our colors here. We could, but I'm just going to use the dark green on the, going up the side as far as it's green. I don't worry about the top, because if you were to hang this on the wall, the top edge wouldn't show. That would be probably above your eye level. But the sides might show. And I'm going to do, this. I'll do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be even. All you're doing is getting rid of the sloppy, irregular edge that you formed or that the canvas formed when you were painting. And I'm going to take the light blue now and do the top or the medium blue, it doesn't matter. So I'm just kind of going to meet the blue and the green together, roughly at the horizon line. But this isn't really part of your painting. This is just to make it look a little bit more acceptable if you're not framing. If you're not putting it in a frame, it won't look so rough on the edges. OK. That's that. Now the fun part. Now we can start on our flowers. Maybe that's the fun part. We'll let you decide. Okay, I'm going to mix, take my dark green, mix a little water into it so it's kind of thin. Now I'm going to pick up the painting a little bit to do this because the edge of the, the easel has a lip on the bottom and I want to get it out in front of that. You're laying yours right down on the table. Now, don't want too much paint on your brush, but use the edge of your brush, the narrow edge of your brush, and make some stalks going up with the dark green. And make them all different angles and all different heights, too. Make some short ones, some tall ones, and you can go all the way across. Like the sample ones, the flowers go all the way across. I think this time what I'm going to do 
and it's up to you how you want to approach this. If you like the flowers and you want to emphasize the flowers, fine. I think what I'm going to choose to do this time, I'm getting paint. I'm going to, um, I think I might have my, my hand in your way. So I'll move and hold the canvas like this. So, but I'm going to make just a bunch of flowers on this side. And I'm not going to make them all the, all the way across. I'm going to leave it to you how you want to do yours. But the point is I want a lot of these stems coming up. And this could be tall grass or it could be flower stems. We don't know. doesn't really matter. So we want some dark ones, but again, we want some light ones too. So we're going to take our light green. And again, a little water mixed in with it so it's kind of thin. And make some light stalks. Just flick your brush. Hold it about halfway up and just flick it. So some of the stems, like the grass, some of the stems are in the sunlight. Some of them are more shaded. So there are light ones and dark ones. And they're all mixed in together. So there's that. I'm going to set it back down. Now, this might be the fun part. Actually, I'm going to make my stems taller than they are. I'm going to make them stand way out. These are big because they're close to us. And dark. And light. And what these are, these are wildflowers, so probably we have some tall grass and wildflowers all growing in together. So there's our tall grass and flower stems. Now we're going to have blue bonnets, and for those we can use our medium blue, like our sky color. And our blue bonnets have little blossoms coming off the, uh, the sides, of, coming off next to each other, is go up the stem like that. And again, we have some short ones and some tall ones. So now using a little brush, a little round brush, Make your blue bonnet, blue bonnet flowers. Unevenly spaced, just here and there. And they're just mixed in with the stems. It's not this stem is this flower and this stem is this other flower. They're just all mixed in together because these are just growing wild and they're, nobody's weeding this garden patch. This is a, a product of nature. So just here and there, little blue bonnet flowers. And come out of it this way. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe a few Indian paintbrush in there. And the Indian paintbrush flowers, we're going to use our red with just a tiny bit of white mixed in with it. We don't want it pink, we want it still red, but the white will make it a little more opaque so it shows up better. Make it a little lighter, yes, but it'll make it show up better is the main reason we want to do it. Now the Indian paintbrush flower has a shape where these flowers, again, there are different heights along the stalk, but they come out. They kind of flare out from the stem. Yeah. And again, these are not realistic, you know, we're not, these are not super realistic flowers, but you get the idea, oh yeah, this looks like something I've seen before. It's one of those. So, Indian paintbrush here and there. And you can do as many or as few of these as you want. It's perfectly fine if you just want to stop with some tall grasses. But it's always nice to have a little bit of brightness. And this is just another way of putting a little more variation of color in there. Now this one, that first one I did, is a little bit too much of a good thing, so I'm just blurring it out with my finger, blotting out some of the paint. And carrying it down a little bit, so that looks like now two flowers maybe overlapping one another. But it looks a little better than it did before, in my opinion. And we are getting pretty much toward the end. If you wanted to go, yeah, we can go all the way across with flowers, or not, depends. But I think what I want to do first, I'm going to let you decide how much you want to do with flowers, but what I want to do is put some real bright green sunny spots on the grass. Real light yellow-green sunny spots. So we said we want this area uh, even more white. We want this area to be super sunny, so let's do that. And if the green and the, the white aren't mixed, yellow, green, and white aren't mixed all together, fine. That's even better. But we want some super sunny spots on the grass. So let's do that. Let's make the sun shine over here. and bring it across, but fade it out. And bring it down. Blend it, but don't blend it entirely. You don't want to, don't blend it entirely. You want to keep your distinct light and dark areas on the grass, but just put that little extra brightness in there. And that's too much white. So, oh no. Yeah, just blend that in. But if you overdo if you overdo it, then just go back with some of your other green. And, uh, and so you keep the variation. You want to have the solid sunshine in the far distance. But as you go closer, you want to see more shades of green showing up. I think I have this a little too bright. So I'll just fix that a little bit. And blend the dark and the light together. This is another 
decision point where everybody can make up their own minds. What looks good to you is the right way for your painting. If you want it really sunny, you can make it really sunny. If you really, if you want it less so, you can do less, make it less sunny. I'm losing my, um, my shadows in front of these trees. That's bothering me a little bit. And now I'm making it too blue, so I'll just blend it in. I want my dark shadowy area there. And I want my dark shadowy area here. So this is, this is almost entirely blue, more than green, these shadowy areas. And make that irregular with these closer ones. It kind of goes up into the trees because the bottom part of the trees is also shaded, so shadowy, but it's more vertical than the part, than the shadows on the ground. And I'm going to soften this up a little bit. And to soften it up, I'm just going to touch it with a vertical stroke. So I don't have a real distinct area of a real distinct line is what I'm trying to say. And going in with some dark green without so much extra blue in it for the bottoms of these trees. And we're really in the home stretch. We're really cranking on this, at least. It's always a decision point when you're done. But standing back and looking at this, I think I might want to make this a little bit more gradual. And I think maybe the sky a little lighter. What have we got? Sky a little lighter in the lightest part. It's always good to have a lot of contrast. That's what makes the painting. And there's yellow in that. That's too bad. I picked up white that had yellow in it. So I'll just add more white. The way you fix paint is with more, more paint. So I've got too much yellow in it, so I just added some white. And going back now to the light blue and blending it out. And having done that, I think that I am pretty much going to call this a finished painting, and I'm going to go and sign it. It has pink on it. So I'm going to take any color. I'm going to take this, and not that maybe the bluish color. And I'm going to sign my painting in where the flowers are not. If you, you can find any place in the lower corner, I'm trying to keep my arm out of your way, but find any place in the lower corner where you have room and sign your name. with your small brush. OK. 
Okay, I think that's the conclusion of our trip to the hill country for today. I hope, it, I hope you all enjoyed it. And um, I, and, um, and I hope you had a good time. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mess around with my sky a tiny bit. And what I suggest you do now is lean back and take a good look, see if there's anything you want to brighten up or tone down or anything that doesn't look right for you. You can adjust that and I'd be happy to help you. I'm just trying to clear up the mess I made on, on mine before quitting. But I do believe that our painting is done. Okay, I am going to call that, I keep saying I'm done, and I keep fiddling around a little more. Now I'm done. I keep, I'm gonna call that my finished painting.